Now that we've seen the data we'll be working with and the three possible tests that we want to get out of this analysis, let's see how we'll change around our mathematical model to accommodate these additional pieces. Here is our one-factor linear model from before. And I want to remind you that this interior portion was really representing the mean of some group. And remember, we were decomposing the mean of the group into separate pieces that allowed us to make the types of tests we needed to make. So going forward, we're going to be decomposing those four different means, the means I observed in the combination of the two routes and the two times a day. We'll decompose those into separate pieces that allow us to make those three tests I discussed. That is the overall effect of route, the overall effect of time of day, and finally a component that will refer to the interaction, the specific combinatorial effect of time of day and route. So let's reconstruct our model, but now we're going to have to represent more means, so the notation will get a little more complicated. But let's remind ourselves that it's simply bookkeeping. We're simply keeping track of which separate piece we're referring to. So starting with the score on y, in our two-factor linear model, we're going to add a subscript. And in this case, it'll be the y, i, j, k's. That is, the score on y for the i-th individual in the j-th treatment of factor A and the k-th treatment of factor B. Again, this is just bookkeeping to keep track of which individual and which groups this individual was a member of. Now, like we did with our one-factor linear model, we're going to decompose a person's score into separate pieces, pieces that relate to tests we're interested in understanding. So first, we have the grand mean. So we'll be adding to the grand mean treatment offsets that depend on factor A, factor B, and that interaction. So let's start with factor A. The effect offsets for factor A get their own term, which are known as the alpha J's. So these are the effect offsets for level J of factor A. Factor A in our model will simply be route, and so our alpha J's will be the offsets associated with the two different routes. I want to pause and note that alpha here doesn't refer in any way to alpha level. It's simply the A in the Greek alphabet, so we use alpha here to refer to the offsets of factor A. Next, we need the separate offsets that are due to the effect of factor B. In our model, it'll be time of day. And in this notation, it'll be the beta k's. So these are the effect offsets for level k of factor B. Our next term will refer to the interaction offsets. That is, the degree to which the effect of one of our factors depends on the level we're in of the other factor. And our notation for this is customarily written as the alpha beta jk's. These are the effect offsets for the unique effects of the factors in treatment JK. And finally, because we're representing each individual's score, we'll have to add one final component, the individual error. In this case, notice that our epsilon has three subscripts, because of course it's the error for each individual in each of the groups. Now let me step back and talk about the alpha beta JKs. I could have easily written this also as the gamma JKs, this is simply another parameter in the model, but it's customary to write it as the alpha betas to remind ourselves that this is about the combination of the effects of the alphas and the betas. But I don't want you to think that we're multiplying terms here to get this parameter. In essence, it really is just one single parameter, so we could have written it as gammas, but it's important to note that it has two subscripts. That is, we'll have offsets for the interaction that are in each of our different combinations. So there will be some offset here that captures the degree to which one factor's effects depend on the level of the other factor. And we'll spend a decent amount of time decomposing that interaction piece, because it turns out to be one of the more complicated, but one of the more illuminating pieces of this two-factor linear model. So here is our two-factor linear model. And so, just like our one-factor linear model, in which the interior portion formed some prediction or some mean for individuals, so too is the case in our two-factor model. The interior portion, excluding error, is really just the predicted score on y for the i-th individual in the j-th level of factor A and the k-th level of factor B. Or, said differently, this is just the mean of the group for the j-th level of factor A and the k-th level of factor B. 
So I could have just as easily written this model like this. The score on y for the ith individual in the jth treatment of factor a and the kth treatment of factor b is just equal to the mean of group jk plus individual error. So that interior portion is just representing those group means we already saw. But what's magical about the linear model is we've decomposed it into separate pieces that represent important things about the world we want to test. So those alphas, betas, and the alpha betas will actually represent important tests, the ones we've already seen. The overall effect of factor A, the overall effect of factor B, and some interaction between the factors. Now just one final piece of bookkeeping. For the grand mean, because we're going to be discussing so many means, we have to be a little more specific. And so we'll write this as mu dot 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 to remind ourselves that this is the average over all individuals in every group of both factor A and factor B. So those dots simply remind us that we're averaging over individuals and groups.